Have you ever wondered what will happen if you crush some pills, some oral medications, and give it to a patient through the IV? Have you ever thought of that? No, my friend, you don't have to think about it because someone, a nurse here in the United States, has done that to a patient. And unfortunately, the patient died because of the action. And it was not done intentionally, but uh, the action speaks for itself. So it is a big tragedy. And do you know which part from the USA this nurse has committed this accident again? It's from Tennessee. So I don't know what's wrong with Tennessee, but it's the second time for you guys for having this kind of medical issue uh, that has been like a nationwide thing. This actually happened in Turkey Creek Medical Center in Knoxville, Tennessee. So that's a hospital that's uh, being sued right now by the family because of this certain death. But what makes this case interesting is uh, the hospital is defending their actions and they're using the COVID pandemic emergency uh, crisis in order to shield them against this lawsuit. So do you think it is ethical and right that they're using this as an excuse for them to avoid these lawsuits? Interesting, right? So uh, let's go to the details and discuss what happened for this tragic episode. There was a patient being treated for COVID-19 and other various condition. This happened at Turkey Creek Medical Center in Knoxville, Tennessee. But before that, uh, the patient was actually in Kentucky being treated for a disease not related to COVID-19. But ended up being positive when he arrived in Turkey Creek Medical Center. For most cases during that uh, pandemic time, anyone, anyone can give you COVID uh, any time of the day. Uh, the staff, the patients, or relatives can give COVID to you because COVID was widely spread then and then. Then unfortunately, his COVID symptoms progressed uh, rapidly and he ended up being ventilated. But as per documents, patient was actually improving per each day. So normally here in the US, if patients are ventilated, normally they're being given medications to make them sleep. So most likely they will be in like, uh, like induced sleep coma. So these patients can talk, can react, can do anything because they are being snowed or being dragged uh, by certain medications to keep them more comfortable. On my experience, most of the patients who were ventilated because of COVID-19, most of them do not survive, really. Uh, in my case, uh, most of the patients I brought to ICU and have ended up being ventilated, uh, like 90% of them died or more than 90%. I only have three patients who were intubated and, or ventilated and survived. And afterwards, they removed the tube from their throat or has been extubated. So there were only three people who survived. But out of the three, only one survived. The two actually ended up dying after being discharged from the hospital. Uh, of course, due to COVID-19 complications. So that's how bad COVID-19 was then. So anyway, on the morning of October 12, 2020, take note, morning, okay? Patient was to have a round of oral medication for a condition that has nothing to do with COVID-19. I really wonder what kind of medication this is. So the, here, they had to crush the pills supposed to be administered by a tube or the nasogastric tube. Instead, it was given through an IV or intravenously. After which, the patient's heart rate immediately plummeted and he died after 6 minutes. 6 minutes only. It didn't say they did a CPR on him or anything like that, but I am assuming they did. Here, the nurse who has given that medication, or allegedly has given that medication, is Nurse Angela Martinez. That's her name. She did not notify anyone that she gave that crash oral medication via IV. Take note, she did not. Unlike Rodonda Vought wherein when she knew that she f up, she immediately confessed her errors and told uh, responding doctors about what she has done. So in this case, she did the opposite thing. She kept it to herself and did not tell anyone about it. She only reported it seven hours later as per the records. So the patient was long dead before she was uh, able to confess to someone that she actually did an error or did this mistake. Anyway, that's not the worst part. She actually tried to modify the electronic charting on the medication administration record or the MAR. Time at 16.59 or 4.59 and 17.05 or 5.05 on that same day. I'm not really sure why there's like two time frame. Uh, maybe someone distracted her in the middle of it. Then remember, like I said earlier, uh, this happened in the morning shift. The medication was given during the morning shift. 
Uh, then after which she gave or she tried to edit these records in the afternoon around five o'clock. So just take note of the time frame. Then she click not given. She changed the status from being given to not given, and she clicked the reason for others. Uh, they didn't specify what the reason was actually. Then for those who are not familiar with the electronic MAR or electronic medication administration record, uh, normally when you scan the medication or scan the patient, scan the medication and give it to the patient or try to give the patient, on the record, it will show that the medication was given on this particular time and date. Yes, there's a specific record of that. So everything is recorded. Then for whatever reason uh, that uh, you were not able to give this medication after scanning the medication, you can actually uh, go to the MAR and undo it and put a specific reason why you never given this medication. Uh, reasons like wherein the patient doesn't want to take it or the patient spit it out or the patient's like uh, spoil the medications or there's like something update for the patient's uh, condition wherein you deem like it's not good to give this medication, particularly with blood pressure pills. Example, uh, you were supposed to give this medication, but after rechecking the blood pressure, it was actually low. So you ended up not giving that medication. So in order for do that, you have to go to the EMAR, electronic uh, MAR, then undo the medication that you have given. Or uh, click option wherein it's not administered. And you have to select an option for that. Then whenever you do this, uh, whatever you do with the electronic medical records, particularly if you're saving it, it automatically records. So if you undo or not done that medication or like switch it, like change the status, it will definitely show. So in her case, in Nurse Martinez's case, it showed like uh, 1659 and 1705. That's the time she altered those medications that she said or she put a reason that it was not given. So take note of how electronic uh, medication administration record or EHR works. Everything is recorded, okay? So if you're trying to do like pull stuff like uh, ninja moves, so you have to think twice, okay? You have to do better. <laughs> also, nowhere in the narrative does it record shows that the nurse Martinez admitting that she was the nurse who allegedly gave the crush medications via IV route rather than through his feeding tube. So there was no documentation this on anywhere on the electronic medical records. That's what I understand from this. Then as per record, Nurse Martinez told the medical examiner's office uh, that the patient was diagnosed with pneumonia and sepsis related to COVID-19. That's the reason she used and she said that his condition continued to decline leading to his death. So that's from Nurse Martinez. But the family of the patient thought um, that's not true. Uh, they weren't buying it because like I said earlier, his condition was improving day by day as per the records. Uh, so the family wasn't buying whatever reason Nurse Martinez was uh, giving. So the family was insisting uh, to have the autopsy done to know what really actually killed their father or that particular patient. Then as for the forensic uh, center report, they said Nurse Martinez stated that the family was requesting an autopsy regarding allegations that the nurse had given the patient crash medications via IV route rather than through his feeding tube. So I'm not sure if the uh, family was present then when the medication was given. So that's what I understand. Because why would they insist if uh, with specific reasons that they were thinking that the nurse actually gave this unless they were there or they, uh, they were able to witness this, right? Then on the autopsy report, the main cause of death was acute embolization of foreign material or crash meds. So there you go guilty because of the medications uh, which were found through the autopsy so i'm sure there was no uh, way for her to escape this because uh, the medications were actually found there okay which caused the immediate death of the particular patient so just imagine giving those crash medications through your iv so it's like you're giving or injecting clots to the patients and those clots definitely can cause uh, blockage anywhere they go through, particularly on your heart, causing like MI or, of course, uh, problems with your heart, meaning you're going to have like MI, you're going to stop your heart, so etc. and etc. So which actually led within six minutes or which led to the death of the patient within six minutes. So because of this, the daughter is actually suing the hospital for wrongful death. Yes, uh, given like I said earlier, that the patient's condition was allegedly improving daily. 
and the cause of that was not actually related to COVID other than a form of negligence from the nurse's part. But the hospital is saying that the COVID-19 emergency response which promises healthcare workers immunity, there's the word, immunity from liability if COVID-19 vaccines or COVID-19 treatments and countermeasures cause serious injury or death. Mm. I didn't know we have this kind of immunity uh, during this time, which is really good for me because I work most of the time on the COVID floor. So hopefully there is, is such immunity. Uh, but for this case, um, uh, I'll tell my answer later. They are arguing that since the patient is a COVID-19 patient, even if he died of a different reason, it should protect the nurse. Mm. For you, do you think this is right? That the nurse should be protected because of this immunity ruling? Especially given this specific scenario which happened because of her negligence. So if you have answers, please comment down below. I would love to hear your side of your story or side of your opinions or whatever reasons you can give. But the main question is, how the hell will you ever end up giving a crash medications through the IV? I really don't know how. But here are my few speculations. Number one, some NG feeding tubes here in the United States has a port access similar to the IV ports. Meaning, the syringe that you use for the IVs can be used through the NG tubes here. Yes. Then, if you don't know, here in the United States, normally the feeding or the NG feedings are given through a pump. It's like an IV pump, uh, but instead of an IV bag, it's actually they're using an NG feeding. That's like a big bag. And it's a tube, long tube, going through the NG nasogastric tube that connects. And usually they have a side or wipe port where you can put some medications or use it uh, whatever reason you want to put in for that particular round. So it's not like back in the Philippines where you have to do the Statue of Liberty thing where you have to hold your arms for like 30 minutes just to give all the feeding manually. So here in the US, I never done that. Uh, never ever have I done that in the last three years working here in the States. So most of them are really given through an NG pumps, which is a good thing because I really hate doing that part back in the Philippines or in Singapore. <laughs> so that's factor number one. Factor number two, nurse was not 100 focused for whatever reason. Maybe too busy or daydreaming or uh, like Rodanovot, uh, he or she was distracted because of the trainee. So maybe she was also distracted during this time. Or because this happened during the COVID pandemic time, maybe she has a vision problems because of the mask or the face shield and cause her some problems about uh, how to give you medications. So maybe those difficulties played in like a factor for her, maybe. Then factor number three, speaking of orienty, the possibility that someone else gave the medication to this patient. Ooh, third party involved. I get it from TikTok. Someone was discussing about this case and she mentioned that a nurse orientee under Nurse Martinez was actually the one who gave this medication to the patient. Oh, it does make sense. It does play a big part in the role. Uh, there's like a bigger possibility that this might have had happened. Uh, that someone else actually gave this medication to that particular patient. Particularly a new orientee or a nurse who doesn't have that much experience. Because it's really hard for me to accept that an ICU nurse actually made an error, where a basic error, wherein a crush pills was given through the IV to a patient. It's like super basic thing that uh, normally should not happen. So uh, like I said, this information was uh, from TikTok. So I'm not really sure if this is 100% accurate. So if you find a link, anything uh, leading to this, please comment down below also, okay? But given the scenario, I think it is possible. Uh, like maybe Nurse Martinez preferred the medication and left it there. Then the trainee uh, get the medication and administered it to the patient. So that's a high likely possibility given uh, some orientees are not really well trained, especially during the COVID pandemic time. Also, coming from the TikTok comment, it was actually the orientee who tried to alter the bar, not the actual nurse, not Nurse Martinez. Ooh. Yeah. So if this is true, uh, this is really something big. Ever this is true, I don't know why the article did not involve about the Orientic giving this medication. That should have been part of her article, if, if it is true though. So yeah, it's hard to tell who is really telling the truth. But if ever she had an Orienti, so I think Respondent Superior will still um, impose on this. So meaning whatever the Orienti did, it will still fall under the preceptor 
or the one who's training the orientee with the mistakes that she has done. So he or she is still liable for it. Lessons to take here. Number one, always remember the 10 rights of administering any medications. Always remember those basic things, okay? When you think about the basics or return back to the basic uh, skills, you will have a lesser tendency to make mistakes, really. So in this particular case, the category where she made a mistake was on the right route. So you really have to double check, triple check uh, whatever medication you're giving the patient. Uh, lesson number two, if you made a mistake and something horrible happened to a patient, please fess up. Please tell whoever is responsible for that particular care, especially during an emergency case, tell them what actually happened and what transpired uh, during the few minutes before that, that led to that case or that scenario. Because that could lead to like a life and death situation. So holding that information could cause uh, really a death for that patient and it actually did. So I'm not sure if the nurse, uh, Nurse Martinez or this particular orientee uh, fess up what actually happened. Uh, I'm not sure if it will change the case where they could have saved the patient. So I don't know. Because if they fess up, the doctor will actually have a narrower narrower like a uh, view on what to do for this particular patient or as a better understanding what really actually happened to this patient so he or she or the primary care physician can actually care or take care of this patient better so i'm not sure how you can deal with that uh, guilt wherein you were trying to keep everything knowing that the information that you have can actually save the patient and you're actually working few more hours in that particular shift so uh Try not to think about your nurse license uh, during this point. Please think about your patient's safety instead. Lesson number three. If ever, it was actually the orientee who gave that medication. Lesson here is never ever give a medication that you never prepared. Okay, That's super, super basic. Okay, You can tell to your colleagues or that particular nurse that you are not comfortable giving that medication which you have not prepared. Uh, tell them it's uh, they could just give it by themselves. You would appreciate that kind of gesture. So you can say that uh, in a nice way to them. Lesson number four. If you were the orientee who given that medication or asked to give that medication and you couldn't say no. So the best thing you can do is to refer back to number one, which is to remember your 10 medication rights. Always go back to basics, okay? So if you didn't prepare the medication, make sure that it was prepared properly and needs to be given properly. And you know what those medications uh, will have an effect on the patient that you're giving that particular medicines. So you have to know all those things. He or she is just human, so he or she could have done a mistake also. And if she done a mistake and she gave that medication to you and you're the one who gave that medication to your patient, then you will be most likely liable for that because you have given that medicine, okay? So if ever you're the nurse also preparing the medication and to give it to someone else, better not prepare it. Better give them the medication, the packaging, and let them do it by themselves. So it's better, uh, it's better to avoid that kind of scenario. So it's best uh, not to put someone in that kind of setting wherein she will have a doubt about the medication being prepared by someone else, okay? Then number five. If you're trying to alter a uh, document from electronic medical records or, or EHR, electronic health records, remember this, everything is recorded. Yep, everything is recorded. Whatever you change or tweet or edit or whatever you do here, most likely these things are recorded, especially if you click the save button. Just because you did edit it and it looked like uh, it's okay, but inside the system, it really shows that you have done something. So if you're trying to hide something this way, I recommend not to do it, okay? Take note, everything is recorded. So even particular hospitals, everywhere you go, uh, everything's recorded. Like the phone call conversations, uh, most of them are recorded. So anything you say to the doctors or whoever, like your family, those things are most likely recorded. In my previous hospital, the WhatsApp messages are recorded for hospital phones. Uh, there are cameras in the hallways with timestamps. Uh, particularly in like near the nurse stations so it's hard to lie because uh, you are on a camera so everything is recorded whatever you're doing then uh, some of the conversations that you have be careful uh, most of them if um, they might be appearing like your friends but sometimes they can stab you from the back really they can just put a note and report you to the manager without you knowing 
So be careful what you say, be careful what you do. So be mindful of protocols and uh, certain scenarios on how to give information or how to do things, okay? So if you are really busy and you have a lot of medications to give or like, uh, you are like super toxic, the best thing you can do if you're giving a medication, please pause. Pause and think about the medication you're giving, uh, correlate with the vital signs and everything about your patient's conditions and make sure they are okay. To avoid these kinds of errors and problems, you have to have like a 100% on this, okay? So your presence of mind can really uh, make a big change or really take an effect on what will happen in the scenario after giving those medicines. So if you have any comments, suggestions, or practices or about this case, please comment down below. I would like to hear your side of the story. And also, I do want to hear uh, which side are you in. Are you in the nurse's side or with the patient's or the family side? This information is from the Tennessee Outlook. Uh, it's really hard to find details about this case. Uh, there's only few documents or few websites wherein you can find these details. I tried different websites, tried different searches I really couldn't find. But if you were able to find some more details, please comment down below also, okay? I'll try to give you more updates if I find more links or documents uh, pertaining to this case. So I hope you learned something from this video. If you did, please click the like button, subscribe button, and please share friends. Again, I'm Nurse Wanda Cruz, your RFW nurse. Thank you for watching. God bless. Bye-bye.